Hockey Night in Canada, After Hours. Madison Square Garden in New York tonight. Here were the Leafs looking for their second straight win. Full value they were for a 4-1 win over the Rangers. Nick Andropov scored the 3-1 insurance goal. At Mellon Arena in Pittsburgh, it went to a shootout in the 16th shooter. Andre Markov, the only one to score to make it 4-3 Canadians. And here in Los Angeles, it was the Oilers and Kings both trying to feed off wins of a few nights ago. And the Kings did it. Ladislav Nagy with the winning goal. And the Kings have won four straight, four won the final tonight. We're on our way back to the Staples Center, one of North America's great entertainment venues. And I'm sure regular reviewers of this program, and by the way, there are thousands upon thousands of them, almost 500 as we used to say back in Newfoundland, but I'm sure they'll all agree that After Hours is right where it belongs tonight, in the center of the TV universe, L.A. And how about this for a wonderful setup? We're on the balcony of one of the Staples Center's luxurious dining rooms, and we're overlooking, as we mentioned earlier, the Chickhearn Court. And right across the street, I think the Eagles and the Dixie yep. Chicks are playing right now, right? That's and you right. saw them on Wednesday night. I saw Wednesday them on night. Wednesday. Uh, spectacular. Really? I'm, but I'm a huge fan. So, yeah. And Glenn Fry happens to be a really big hockey fan. You know, if people are just tuning in and didn't see the end of the program, just uh, our last segment before we came on the air, they're going to wonder whose underwear you're wearing on your head. <laughs> you caught me off guard there. It feels good, though. We dusted off his old bandana. <laughs> we welcomed After Hours tonight the NHL's leading goal scorer, Mike Camilleri, with uh, 10 goals in 12 games and uh, the bandana was all Mike's idea although you consulted with Rob Blake right? I did yeah Blake you know said, said I hate to say hi to Kelly but he also I said you think this will be funny or is he going to get offended I don't know him that well I don't want him throwing me off the balcony he said it would be a good, quite a temper you know it would be good chuckles so. yeah I can tell you how to offend Kelly and that's not the way to do it okay. yeah. uh, let's start with this you look every bit like a natural goal scorer to the extent that when you're on the ice that's all you're thinking about you're you're dead set trying to score every shift. Is that a fair description? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's. I guess it is. I, I think that uh, you know my team looks upon me for that responsibility as as someone who can produce offensively. So I, I take that responsibility seriously and try and be as uh, as dangerous as we can out there. When uh, you're growing up, were you always tenacious? Because I've noticed in, in these games, uh, as you've grown as a player, you never give up on the puck. You're always dogging it all over the place. I think, yeah, I think that's the only way I've, I've ever been taught to play this game is to compete hard and, and really battle. And uh, I, I really enjoy the game, you know, so it's, uh, it, 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 it's something that I just think I, I've always done. You know, Mike, you made a, uh, have made a lot of news to start this season, and one of the things we often read in connection with your name is Mike Camilleri, the surprise leading goal scorer in the NHL this season. <laughs> How do you view yourself? Do you think you're a surprise? I don't know. I guess I, you know, I guess it's, it's for the for my career so far. It's kind of progressing along, and last year I scored some goals the year before that. So I don't want to say I'm surprised. I think uh, my my line mates, my teammates, have been playing great, and I think they're a direct result of why the puck's going in that for me. And I. I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and call it a surprise, but it's, it's nice to get off to that big of a start, that's for sure. And uh, we showed a clip earlier in the day about uh, how well you guys cycle the puck, your line. How, how do you work on that? Do you talk about it a lot? Yeah, a lot of communication. I think the, the biggest thing for us is trying to get that chemistry as a line where you don't have to turn and look to make the play because guys are too good positionally yeah. in this league. They'll cover it. It's, uh, it's got to be a little bit of that innate sense where you know where the guy is. So. You play off each other's strengths. You know, when like, do you know to attack the net, though? I try and pop in that overload right when they get their head up. And uh, and if, they, if, if I get covered up there, then I attack the net and hopefully lose somebody on my way there. So And, and, and those two guys are so good at protecting and getting themselves some time with the puck. This is a special connection this line seems to have. This yeah. is uh, uh, some cycling that uh, Kelly showed earlier tonight. Yeah, that was actually that. our first shift, and that was a great shift. And yeah. We weren't able to, to replicate it as many times as we liked, but we talked about trying to do that all night. And how is it different, though, because I, we talked about, Scott and I, about how you guys do it differently than the Sedins might. Yeah, I mean, I, we tr I fan on this one. I can't yeah. do that. I said, really sorry. I, I said I was faking it so Blakey could get it. See, I, I shouldn't admit that. But, uh, you know, I think the Sedins, they, they really try and play that five-foot passing game down low. Yeah. And uh, we try and bring it low to high, low to high, maybe get, get them moving a little more. And use your D more than and, they do. And use our D a little more. At the same time, you know, I'll be honest with you, we, we've watched the Sedins and we've said, let's try and do a little more of that five-foot passing wow. game that they do. And then uh, huh. and you watch teams, you watch Sackick on his line, how he does it. You watch Zetterberg and Datsuk, how they do it. And you, 
to try and pick up from things they do. And then you got Dallas who does it the opposite. Medano stays all high and, hmm. and try and try and mix it up. So, so watching you, the Sedins, you're only missing one thing, and that's your twin brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding. I, those guys are both a little taller than I am. So, I don't think we get away with so it. five foot passing, you watch them all down low or still up high where you guys uh, did some of your best work tonight? That's or enough. all over? We can't give any oh, yeah. secrets. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You're right. You're right. <laughs> that's enough. I'm trying. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Yeah, well, Fair enough, right? <laughs> Move on. A uh, question from Jeff in Hamilton, and it is this. As a Canadian-born player, is there a desire to play for a Canadian team once your contract with the Kings expires at the end of the 08-09 season? I, I, I know exactly how you're going to answer this. Yeah, well, it's, you're going to get the exact, the exact yeah. answer you thought. You know, I'm really happy with my employer right now, and this is uh, we're doing some exciting things here in L.A., so I haven't even come close to thinking about that. Although, let me point this out. You know you're supposed to be a Toronto Maple Leaf. Uh, well, I was a Leaf draft pick that right. they traded for and then drafted me. So the cool thing for me was that the draft had said uh, L.A. from Toronto. Right. Which and that was an 0-1. I was. <laughs> and they traded the second round pick to the Kings for Aki Berg and Adam Mir. Right. And I think Leaf fans know well how that trade has turned out for them. And it, given what you're doing with the Kings right now. But I guess the question is this. Has it ever crossed your mind how close you came to playing in your hometown? Yes and no. Like I said, it said it on the board, but I know the fact of the matter is that was just a pick that they, they might or might not have taken me with. So, uh, I guess, maybe. <laughs> Let's bring the fans in quickly again. The LA Kings have never regained their popularity from when Gretzky was around. Will this new young team be able to capture the imagination of the LA fans? That's from Kim in Dawson Creek, BC. Yeah, I think there's no doubt. I think we're, we're really excited and the city's going to get really excited. I, I mean, it's our job to get some wins and get some results because that's always what is going to attract them at the end of the day and attract fans. But we got some some top end talent, some exciting young players, and uh, and you know we're a team that's if, if we get these wins and we keep rolling like this, we've seen this building fill up like like no other. So uh, I think there's no doubt that we'll be able to do that. Mike Camilleri, uh, the pride of Richmond Hill, Ontario, leading goal scorer in the NHL, 10 goals in 12 games to start the season is our guest on After Hours, and we'll continue live from the Staples Center in downtown Los Angeles in a moment.